All right, hello everyone. Thank you for being here. This is Goose Auto Works, and this, for the second time in less than two months, is what we're doing today. How's it going, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. I wasn't initially going to film this video, but then I put on my prescription safety glasses, felt confident, fly as heck, and thought, you know what? Let's just do this thing thing. So here we are, and as I mentioned in the intro, this is the second time I'm having to do this in about six weeks or so. So I figured if I'm having to do this twice, somebody out there's gotta be doing it at least once. So might as well just document it and see if I can help somebody out. So the problem on these Lincoln MKXs, the Ford Edges, um, the factory fan, the OE design has shortcomings and namely that is going to be that the heat sinks that are on them are too small for the actual fan and the chips inside um, just don't hold up to the heat as well. So the first one failed coming home from the beach after Memorial Day. I got and then went in about two days, put it on and it lasted pretty much exactly a month before the same thing happened coming home after 4th of July weekend. So maybe some of this is induced by long trips i don't know but it's been working fine since that day but if it's going to fail once it, obviously something's going on with it so i'm replacing this oe design with one that should have a better fix to it it should have the larger heat sinks better chips and not have an issue in the future but without further ado let's just go ahead jump straight into it get this thing knocked out First thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and get that battery disconnected. So this is a 10 millimeter and I'm just going to disconnect the negative post here and push this cable off to the side. Uh, once that is clear of the battery and out of the way, you can go ahead and focus your attention on getting this air box removed. So these are all going to be 8 millimeter bolts and for these front two that are closest to the grill, make sure that you mark those, set them aside, label them, do something so that you know which two bolts these are. I'll get into it a little bit more here in a bit on why that's so important. But once you get those two bolts removed, you can go ahead and then pull this front section of the air box out. At the bottom of the air box, it is just seated into some rubber grommets um, with these plastic feet. So once you get that popped loose it's just a matter of pulling the entire air box up and out and then out of the way with the air box out of the way you can go ahead and disconnect the main harness that's going to the fan it's just this one right here now there are a couple of plugs in the back of the fan but those run from one fan to the other and so you'll just leave those alone then the same main harness is going to run the width of the fan assembly so I'm just going to use a plastic trim removal tool to loosen up all of the anchor points. I believe there are three and they're just plastic barbs so be careful when removing those they might break. Next you can go ahead and get under the vehicle for your pepcock. You're going to need to drain some coolant out. You can either use a three quarter inch wrench or ratcheting socket or I believe this is a 5 16th hex and this does get pretty brittle so be careful when tightening it back it's very easy to break it then we can go ahead and focus our attention on the passenger side I'm going to start by disconnecting this plug on the hood latch sensor and that's just going to gain me a little bit more access to work when removing the top hose that goes to the radiator so using a pair of channel locks I'm just going to loosen that tension clamp scoot it off to the side and then pull the hose off um, when pulling the hose off, you may have a little bit of coolant that is going to spill out depending on how much you drained and That's all right, but just be mindful that that could happen um, If you don't drain anything out at all, you're gonna obviously have a whole lot more than if you drained the whole thing completely so I just push the hose up toward the cab of the vehicle to get it out of the way and I do have a little bit of coolant spilling out so I'm going to put a little rag in here um, that's fine to do just make sure that you don't use something that can get soft or degrade like a paper towel you don't want to lose debris and get it down into the radiator then we can go ahead and start working on getting the fan itself loose so if you go from this hood sensor and look straight down there's going to be one eight millimeter bolt right here 
and then on the passenger side it's the same place opposite side right here with those last two bolts removed you can go ahead and work on starting to get this fan out now those last two bolts were an eight millimeter and they are the same thread as the two bolts that were holding in the front of the air box so the reason why I said that is important to keep those separated and labeled is because the bolts that hold in the fan are much shorter than the bolts that hold in the air box and if you get those flipped around and try to install the long ones into the fan assembly you could go far enough to puncture a hole in your radiator and that would not be fun for you at all <laughs> so do yourself a favor of a potential headache and just make sure you keep those separate and you shouldn't have any problems as far as pulling the fan out it takes me about one minute here to do and just go slow if it feels like it's stuck on something it is um, don't pull or yank make sure that it's not caught up on anything there's no cables still connected anything like that just be easy and it will find its way out and it's not really all that difficult to do speeding this part up because the install is just a reverse of the removal just go ahead and double check that all of the harnesses are reconnected, that that top radiator hose is fully connected and seated, and then go ahead and top off your coolant reservoir as well. Next, you're going to go ahead and start up the vehicle. And then go ahead and put your AC on all the way. That is going to prompt your fans to kick on. And so now let's go check it out and see if they're on. All right, so the fan is kicking on like it's supposed to. Everything's looking good. Uh, one more thing to keep an eye on. When you do start this up, let it get up to operating temperature. Depending on how much coolant you drained out or if you were doing a full flush, you're going to want to make sure that that thermostat cycles open because you may need to top off your coolant. If you have any dirty or leftover coolant, please find a way to dispose of it responsibly. If you search in your area, usually there's places that will accept the old coolant in. I know it's a little bit inconvenient to make it out there, but it is the right thing to do. So I'm pretty dirty, um, but an hour and a half to two hours is probably what you should expect for this job, provided you don't run into any issues. And hopefully this video helps with that. So if you did like this video, please press the like button <laughs> if it helped you out and subscribe if you are interested in more content like this. Apart from that, Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.